So Strava has just announced a brand new feature for subscribers, and for once, I think it's actually something people asked for. Uh, it's the ability to see photos while route planning. So if you're doing route planning, now you can actually see the photos in real time on the map, as opposed to the update earlier this year, which showed photos on your route, but didn't show you actually where those photos were. So it was sort of like a, you hoped you would see what you found. But anyways, let me just dive right into it and show you how it works. So this is a desktop only update, again, only for subscribers, people who pay money for Strava, which is fine for the moment. Uh, and what I've got here is a map of the Chamonix Mont Blanc area where UTMB is next week, the uh, ultra trail uh, marathon set of races. And I'm gonna show you back and forth between what Strava is doing and what Kamut is doing. Because in some places, Strava does it better, but in some places, Kamut does it better. And it's maybe they can learn something from each other a little bit. Uh, so this is the area right here. The very first thing you see is that bubble right in the middle. This is showing a collection of photos from that area. Uh, and I take some issue with this because there's a lot of amazing areas uh, here. And that is a very pretty area, but I would think more bubbles. Like this is the epicenter of a hiking in Europe in some ways. And so that's the only bubble it finds. Whereas if we look at Kamut here, you can immediately see every single one of those green dots is a photo. So it allows you to like quickly glance at this and go, oh, maybe the areas where all the green dots are where I wanna start my route planning. Uh, but nonetheless, we will see those just in a second as we zoom in on Strava. So I'm gonna zoom in here uh, up north a little bit um, and go down to Argentera. I'm gonna start there and watch as I keep going down. Eventually, we get little blue dots. There we go, boom, those are blue dots. And each one of the blue dots represents a photo. Uh, so I'm gonna start in Argentera. Here we go, and I'm gonna work my way up. Uh, I'm gonna follow this trail towards up here. And the reason why this matters mistake with the green. That's actually the little one that goes somewhere else. Bye. Okay, so I've got this little section of route right here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna zoom in on Kamut. You can see all those green dots there. Those represent photos. And on Kamut, I can hover above those and see the photos, right? All makes sense. And the same is true over on Strava, except you don't see them at the zoom We gotta zoom in more. And once you do that, you start to see there's actually a lot more photos. Uh, so if I zoom in here, I can see this uh, crazy, what is that thing doing? It's some, some animal on the edge of a ledge. That's a poor life choice there. Uh, and that brings up just a couple things. Number one, Strava will not show you any humans, uh, human faces or bikes. Those are three things, I guess. Uh, number two, they won't show you any private photos. So this is only public photos on public activities with fully public profiles and photo sharing set to yes or public. If any one of those things is set to private or no, then no photo shows up from that user or that activity. So if you have a public activity, but your profile is normally set to followers only, then none of your photos will ever show up here. Additionally, none of your photos will show up if they're in your own privacy zones. Anyways, as we move along here, you can see these photos. So I can look at this trail and be like, oh, this trail is apparently full of wildlife here. Uh, there we go. And if you look at this cluster, that's when you get the bubble. So these are clusters of photos. And generally that means that there's probably something interesting there. There's a bunch of people taking photos in that same spot. And there we go. And one of the things that I've learned, I, I did some like math on some of these little trails here. And I looked at this whole section right here of trail. Uh, and in this one section, commute basically from roughly this there uh, up to the B had 10 photos. And as I zoom in on commute, you don't get more photos. What you see green dot is what you get. Uh, versus on this section on Strava, that same section, when I zoomed in, there was over 50 photos on that same length of trail. So five to one ratio. Uh, and this is essentially the feature in a nutshell. And it's cool, except I want these dots to show up way higher because once I zoom out, I'm like, oh, no one must be there at all. That must not be a place to be. Versus on Kamut, when I zoom out, it's like, aha, this is a cool place. There's lots of dots all on this trail. I should go check that out. And certainly Strava's likely gonna have way more photos in most places because there's way more people on Strava uploading to the platform after every activity. Whereas most people tend to use Kamut more as a route planning feature than like a sharing platform. Obviously people do share on Kamut, but I think we all agree Strava's sort of the, the king of that particular segment. Um, anyways. Now I did for fun also look at just random areas. So I went riding down south today of Amsterdam and like farmland area, just pure farms, no tourist attractions out there or really fancy things to see. Uh, and I had like a count there between photos. And in that case, it was a little bit closer. Uh, for one random section of farmland, there was 12 Strava photos and there was seven Kamut photos. Uh, so Strava is still winning, but in those cases out in the middle of nowhere, uh, it's gonna be maybe a little bit more even, probably still again weighted towards Strava. Also keep in mind, Strava is saying that they are going to update the photos every 48 hours uh, automatically. So they're gonna focus on recency. Uh, and further, they will cut off photos that are older than a year 
from this. So that way you're ideally looking at conditions that are more similar to what you'll probably see now. So that way, especially notable on roads uh, in backcountry trails, not such a big deal, but uh, for new roads and new trails and stuff like that, uh, that will be more useful than older photos that may be different from the past. Now, once you finish up creating this whole loop on Strava, uh, then you will see at the top all of the photos and they are sorted there by recency as well. So you see past week, past week, past week, past week, 194 photos on this list. Though once I open this list, it's still not sorted by recency. Then it becomes like just a complete, you can see like snow photos, which certainly not here in late August, lots of snow photos. Uh, so I wish this was still sorted by recency on this page, but you know, I'm not gonna complain too much. Uh, overall, this is a cool update. Like, I use Strava and Commute route planning all the time. The last few weeks I've been in the Dolomites doing some absolutely epic uh, rides and hikes and runs and stuff like that. And people are always like, how do you find these amazing routes? And the answer is, I spend a lot of time looking at photos. If I'm just going out for a ride like today, I, I don't really care too much. I just wanna get the miles in. But in this case, if I'm going out in the mountains, I'm trying to find like, what is arguably be the most scenic route? Because I think that's the route that I'm gonna enjoy the most. But you can also use that for finding safe routes, uh, finding cases where the trail conditions match what your abilities are. For example, if I'm going gravel bike riding, I want it to be gravel-ish, not like mountain bike with a side of gravel. That's a two totally different trails. And the same is true if I'm going road bike riding, I want it to be roads and not roads with a strong side of gravel. Uh, so this is where photos are super useful. And I think for all the complaining, rightfully so, that people have for Strava and all the features they don't implement, this is one that I think sticks to landing pretty darn well if they can just change the zoom level. Anyways, if you found this video interesting and useful, just whack that like button there or hit subscribe at the bottom. There is plenty more sports technology stuff coming in the next little while and uh, they're gonna make use of this route here pretty darn soon to demonstrate some of that. With that, have a good one.